but the lead was just too much to overcome. And Utah dropped. Talk about a game of runs. Miami goes on a 15-0 run in the first, and then Utah goes on a 20 to nothing run in the fourth, and the Heat come out on top, 111-105. Yeah, look, the Heat dominated the entire game and then started playing the clock a little bit too early there at the end, Chris. You know, trying to run it down before they got into their offense so they couldn't score. And Utah came storming back. We see this all the time now in the NBA. It's not rare. Um, it's not a matter of a team choking. It's none of those things we would have thought in the 90s, let's say. It's just a different game now with the three. And great comeback by Utah. But the fact that they got dominated for 42 minutes is what ended up costing them. Welcome to NBA Saturday Night presented by State Farm. Why is that? Why do you suppose we're seeing that? Well, the game's so volatile because of the three. So we know how quick teams can come back making threes. But when teams shoot so many threes, you're also going to go cold at times and not be scoring. And so, you know, and the pace of the game is up. So shots come quickly. And the Heat were in a good rhythm. And then they got ahead and said, OK, let's take some clock. And then they couldn't score because they were giving themselves 10 seconds to try to get a shot off instead of using the whole clock. I like to give respect and credit where it's due. Dap me up, my friend, because you said Duncan Robinson's got to get going. Six for 11 from three-point range. Jordan Clarkson's got to get going, averaging 14 points per game this season. 25 points in rebounding. Going to be huge. Who wins that? Wins the game. Miami won the rebounding battle. They come out on top.